We know there are near and mid-term supplies side shocks potentially that weigh into this, but when it comes to the demand story, should he really be so optimistic? What are the factors at play here? Thanks, Heidi. Yes, we did hear quite an interesting statement from the Secretary General, like you had pointed out, saying the worst is in fact over for the oil market. Now, a report from the group today showed that OPEC raised its forecast for the amount of oil it will need to supply over the next four years. And the cartel is also projecting that demand will continue to grow for another two decades. But I do have to say, OPEC's call is quite a bit more bullish than some of the oil majors like BP and Total. In fact, both of those companies forecast oil demand to peak around 2030. So that's about 15 years earlier than OPEC's estimate. And when it comes to short-term demand, though, you know, the outlook is still a bit concerning, especially with global virus cases above 35 million. Governments from London to Madrid and New York City contemplating further restrictive measures. And, you know, we still have many companies having employees work from home, children at home, less demand for gasoline. So, you know, and when it comes to demand specifically in Asia... Fitch Solutions pointed out that it only sees it returning to pre-virus levels by 2022. So we do have a bit of a ways to go. Uh, that was a very optimistic call from the OPEC Secretary General. And things obviously can change and, and play out in a different way. But, you know, we're still on a bit of a shaky path when it comes to a true demand recovery. Let's talk a little bit about supply because right now WTI holding steady, but this after climbing to a one-month high in the New York session. Of course, we do have Hurricane Delta now approaching. That's right, Sherry. I'm so glad you brought that up. We are focusing on Hurricane Delta here. And uh, WTI did get a bit of support today as the Gulf of Mexico producers had to quickly shut in, prepare ahead of this hurricane, which is currently a Category 2, and it could land as a Category 3. So, so far, Gulf operators have shut in nearly 92 percent of crude output and just over 60 percent of natural gas output. I also want to point out that ports in the Port Arthur sector, including Beaumont, Lake Charles, they will also shut tonight. So we're expecting limited crude output in the Gulf and a slowdown in ship traffic as well, which may tighten the market significantly in the short term until that storm passes through and until it's safe for operators to ramp back up in offshore production, that is. And Jess, of course, always political news affecting oil price. We are hearing that oil workers are striking in Norway as well. What should we be watching out for on what could hit prices in the short term? That's very true. The oil market has been feeling that lingering impact of that offshore oil worker strike in Norway, which could very well, let me point out, extend to the biggest North Sea field and then threaten the equivalent of almost one million barrels a day of the country's output. So right now, Equinor will have to close that field if the industrial action that started last week continues until October 14th. Other projects will also have to shut if there's no agreement reached by midnight on October 10th. So we're watching that October 10th date approach very quickly to see if an agreement will be reached.